how does somebody get their protein on a plant-based diet? Well, for me, Doug, I mean, look, look at me. I put on a hundred pounds on, I mean, you, you can't deny that, right? You, I, I put on, I became a champion bodybuilder. Like, that's the thing. Like I've joked on some other podcasts too, that people will go, Hey, so where do you get your protein? When I'm like way bigger and more muscular than them and plant-based and getting more protein than they're consuming on, and they're eating animals every day. So like, that's just part of it. Part of it is the example. Like it's, it's absolutely doable. And there are athletes twice my size. I mean, huge NFL players and power lifters and Olympic lifters and pro wrestlers uh, who are plant-based. Uh, Ryback Reeves is a guy. He's been a huge en enthusiast for our book. He promotes it a lot. And he's got millions of followers online. He's a 290 pound uh, former WWE intercontinental champion, massive guy. And he's all about plant-based eating and, and vegan living. And you know, you're going to ask that guy where he gets his protein. He's 300 pounds. He breaks people in half. Uh, but the, the real answer, Doug, like the one that people are looking for is that if you reach your calorie needs on a daily basis, if you consume adequate calories, you're going to get the requ requisite protein that you need just by default. Because as we discussed, I think offline, everybody eats some sort of variation in their diet. You don't eat only broccoli all day long. You don't just sit there and eat cans of tuna all day long. And that's the only thing you eat. We all eat a variety of food and, and in all of those foods, are the amino acids, the building blocks of protein. And, and all essential amino acids are, plant, are, are found in plant foods, some smaller amounts, some in larger amounts, but that's true of anything that we do. There's always smaller amounts and larger amounts of everything, vitamins, minerals, you know, this particular antioxidant, you know, this amount of fiber, this amount of whatever, and our body takes all of it. It takes everything that we consume and it says, okay, here you go. Here's what you got to work with. And if you reach your calorie needs, you're going to reach your protein needs. That's just there's almost no way around it unless you, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know if you ate only celery, you'd, you'd fall short, but maybe you wouldn't. Uh, so, so just understand what your calorie needs are, get those met and you'll, you'll get your protein needs met too. Yeah. I mean, I, I love that you said that because we were talking before we recorded and um, you know, our, my friend, we, we talked about, we talked about Simon Hill and Simon and I were having this conversation about uh, complete proteins and in, in the complete amino acids. And he's like, well, would you ever eat brown rice all day? And I was like, no, like I wouldn't eat, I wouldn't eat like whatever it was, 2000 or 2,500 calories of just brown rice. I would eat a variety of foods. And it brought up a good point because yes, I think by themselves, like brown rice specifically might not be a complete, um, have all the complete amino acids, right? You know, black beans in itself might not have all the complete amino acids, like essential amino acids, right? But combined, if you combine them with a few other foods, if you're eating that throughout the day, you can get that full spectrum of the essential amino acids that you need to, to build muscle and to get the proper protein intake. So yeah, that, that's, so that's a really important point, right? You don't, yeah. you don't need to get your complete, all your amino acids in one meal. Your body pools the amino acids throughout the day is fine. Uh, perhaps even over many days is fine. And uh, no one said lysine yet, but you mentioned it earlier. And, and I was glad to hear that because like in, in all the interviews we've done, really like people haven't really dived that deeply in. It's just been protein. Maybe they'll mention essential amino, acid, amino acids, but, uh, but lysine is, is known as like, that's the limiting amino acid. And, and it's thought, you know, people say, if you get enough lysine on a plant-based diet, you're getting enough protein on a plant-based diet because that's the one that's hardest to get. Um, but there are lots of ways to get it. And, and to me, you can kind of, there's sort of like a cascading, like if you, if you want to do it in the purest way, like eat a bunch of lentils, eat quinoa, eat amaranth. And, and if your diet's based on those kind of things, you're going to get enough lysine and leucine, by the way. Um, if you want to go like another step down the process chain, and these foods really aren't processed. Tempeh is a soy product that, that is, you can see the whole beans in it really. It's, it's barely processed. Soy is kind of halfway processed, but you know, Dr. Gregor, who's a guy who a lot of plant-based people look up to, he says beans are so healthy, legumes are so healthy that, that soy, even one that, that is, is a process where you've lost some of the fiber, um, sorry, not, not soy, but tofu. That, uh, that, that's, that that's still a, a really great food to eat because beans are so healthy to begin with. Um, so like if, if you're going to go down to that level or like seitan, which is wheat gluten basically, but that's loaded with, with lysine. So like if you're going to go to this next level where you're eating tofu, seitan, tempeh, you can get a lot more lysine. And then if you want, if, you, if you're really still worried, take a, take a plant-based protein powder and, and those you know, can get you half your lysine content right there in one serving. Um, so it's just, I don't know, it, it, to me, like Robert said, like there's a million different things you can think about you can think about, does this particular diet give you enough fruit? Or is that a big limiting factor of this diet? Uh, I would say a lot of mainstream diets, yeah, don't give you enough fruit. So like, there are all different things you can worry about. You can classify things according to, you know, type of macronutrient or even broader classes like that, fruit versus non-fruit. Um, 
So just there's a lot of ways to think about things. A lot of things we can optimize. Everyone wants to focus in on plant-based or, or go even more narrow and think about this particular amino acid. Um, but you know, I, I think I think it's just it's just one factor of many many things to consider when you think about diets. And Doug, can I add something real quick? Yeah, yeah. Because I think this is important. You 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 inspired me to say this immediately when you talked about well you know, you'll, you'll probably go ahead and get your complete protein from, from me, but now you got to do these other different vegetables and everything, but you got to look at, at a food in its totality. So let's say you get your complete protein from meat. Well, you're also getting dietary cholesterol. You're probably getting saturated fat. You're probably getting all these extra things. It could be a class one carcinogen. It could be a class two, a carcinogen, especially if you're eating deli meats and hot dogs and, and foods like that. You're probably, what are you doing with those, with those foods? You're probably covering them with oil. You're getting tons of extra calories that way. You're probably putting them with some sort of bread, you know, white refined bread food. That's not healthy at all. Not health promoting. You're adding condiments on there. You have this, you're probably putting cheese on it, dairy on there, you know, with, you know, and that's, and that's really, really problematic. I mean, most people are lactose intolerant around the world. It's not a natural food for us to consume. Um, you know, as adults, we shouldn't be breastfeeding, um, but billions of people still do it. And that, that's, I think, important. You have to look at it as Rip Esselstyn says, you know, foods have baggage that come with them. And so you can say, yeah, animal proteins, you know, complete protein, but it's, it has this baggage that, 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 that comes with it. And so there's a lot of foods that, that, that don't necessarily have that baggage. They have like this, this health promoting uh, luggage instead of baggage that, that helps like, you know, scrub artery walls and helps replenish nutrients and helps revitalize and helps with digestion and and helps with utilization and, and helps with a good return on investment nutritionally as far as low calorie and high nutrient yield. And so I think we need to look at that because we, when we obsess about protein, what do we do, Doug? We, we overlook, we underestimate, and we exclude the benefits of complex carbohydrate foods of really good quality fats, omega-3 essential fatty acids, primarily DHA, EPA. And we tend to, with our, our hyper fixation on high protein foods, end up eating a massive calorie surplus because those foods come with so much extra stuff as far as like the breads, the batters, the oils, and things like that, and, and salty and, and maybe makes us need to consume a bunch of liquid um, calories, which then adds to excess weight gain over time. And that can be problematic. And, and like Matt said, is a diet lacking fruit or leafy greens or lacking beans, which you look at the blue zones research, the, the longest lived populations in the world on all these different continents, the one thing that ties them together more than anything nutritionally is legumes. That is the factor that, that, that joins all of them. And then there's other factors as far as community and happiness and well, well-being, but nutritionally beans, legumes, you know, are, are where it's at. And so is your diet lacking those because of a fear of lectins or a fear of, uh, of complex carbohydrates or a fear of whatever the case is, a fear of soy. Sometimes we're, what I think we're, we're just missing, you know, we're missing the boat when we focus just on protein. And, and why do we do that? And we actually wrote about that in the book, the history of, of our obsession with protein, of, of, of uh, family diner restaurants, of television and ad commercials, of, uh, of convenience stores and fast food and um, the supplement industry and all this stuff. So just for people to listen in here, I, I think there's a lot of baggage that can come with certain types of protein, and we should at least have that in the conversation. 